Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Kevin. As you guys can see, Mikel is not in this video with me. Mikel will be back with me for a new video on Wednesday. So if you're looking for Mikel, he's not here. I'm sorry, but you can go tweet him on Twitter at Mikel86 and make sure you follow him on Instagram at Mikel86. Make sure that you please start this video off by clicking the thumbs up button and make sure that you share this video on Facebook and Twitter. Also, you guys, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has been supporting the Scorpion Show. And I know that a lot of people really watch the Scorpion Show for gossip videos. But I really especially want to say thank you to those who watch our interviews. Because the Scorpion Show is not trying to be a stagnant show on YouTube, you know. Me especially, I don't want to say the same things every week. I want to do some stuff that's interesting. I want to get more people to watch. And even though, yeah, you know, we get some people that say, oh, I tweet your videos and I share it on Facebook. I actually did some research this weekend and I see that most people do not do that. They don't post it on their Facebook walls and they don't tweet the videos as much. And I'm not coming down on you guys. So, you know, I just got to think of more innovative ways for the people to watch the scripting show other than word of mouth. So now I'm actually, you know how I sit here on YouTube and I tell people, oh, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. Now I'm actually sitting back and looking at myself and saying, oh, this is what you need to do. Because, you know, if we say, oh, we're going to follow you, then we'll probably get over 200 tweet, retweets for somebody to, you know, you know, just to get our fans to retweet a video because we say we're going to follow you or, you know, you'll win a Scorpion Show shirt. That's the only way we get people to retweet. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to feel like I have to bribe people to retweet a video and to share a video just to get people to watch. So shout out to those who genuinely watch the Scorpion Show, not for a follow and not for a damn shirt. Shout out to y'all, the real fans. Shout out to y'all. But if you know, I do welcome everybody that want to watch the Scorpion Show gossip. But you know, it's just that I've really been like, damn, you know, we really got to do some more stuff. So we will be doing more stuff. I will be brainstorming, you know, more, you know, for more ideas for, to make the Scorpion Show better. If you have any ideas, you know, you, please feel comfortable dropping it down in the comments down below. And you can also, you know, email me or write me on, DM me on Facebook or write me, not DM me on Facebook, inbox me on Facebook or DM me on Twitter or wherever else. If you just want to share your comments, just drop the shit down below. You know, so shout out to everyone who watched our Gogo Mara interview. Gogo Mara is a Philadelphia artist, and you know, I did have my reservations about getting her on the show because I said, well, people don't know who she is, so I know they're not going to watch. And you know, one day I want to have that over effect where I just be like, bitch, you don't know who he is, or you don't know who she is, but you're going to find out who she is, and then you're going to go out and go buy her stuff. And buy this and buy that. You know, that's the effect that Oprah had. Oprah can push somebody out and sell somebody who, or a book sell or whatever, or their TV ratings, just by having them come on the show. And in the future, one day, you know, that's the kind of effect that I want to have. I don't want to be like Oprah at all because, you know, Oprah don't curse and all. Well, she probably do curse. I don't know. But, you know, we don't have that effect yet. But, you know, I want to be able to have that effect to make people say, yes, I really got to watch this. And, I yes, I got to get them to, I got to buy it and everything. But to those who did watch the video with Google Mara, thank you so much. She's a Philadelphia artist. She's going to she's gonna make it. You know, you know, I really enjoyed having her on the show. And, you know, I've noticed that everybody that we've been interviewing has the, their personality, especially if you don't know them, their personality is just great. Like, I didn't even know how Bridget Kelly sound when she talked. And, you know, she had all this personality. I didn't know how Gogo -Go said when she talked and she had a bunch of personality. And the girl can sing because, you know, I had to do some research and everything. And I'm sweating because I'm under these hot-ass lights. And, of course, I had me a cocktail. But, yeah. So, you know, I could go on and on. I'm just going to have to miss some minutes of the voice because I think that this video is going to be... It's going to be a lengthy video. But, um, you guys... Again, really feel free to leave in the comments down below what do you think would make the Scorpion show better. Now this is your chance. But without all the shadiness, you know, if you want to see somebody on, if you want to see something different, if you want less more or less or more, whatever, just leave it down below. But again, don't be shady with your words. It's the right way to say everything. And you know, I don't want to block nobody, you know, and you know I will block a bitch in a minute. Y'all know I do. So don't go there with the comments. And don't be like Trent. Talk about, oh, a new co-host. You know, save that shady shit for another day. Even if it is your true opinion, save that shit for another day. I ain't got time for that. So, you know, man, let me tell you. First, my insanity. My insanity workout. Oh. Okay, remember I made that video where I said I was nervous. Okay, so I killed it that week. Oh, my God, I fucking killed it. I went down to 221 pounds. I said, oh, my God, like, this is crazy. And all the workouts, you know, they're working on my bleaks and everything, my abs, my stomach, you know, all those workouts, they were just, 
amazing. And then, you know, um, I talked to Tamar that Friday, and Tamar was like, oh my God, you should come down to Atlanta, and you know, I'm having my birthday party, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I was like, well, if I go to Atlanta, I would just take my Insanity DVDs with me, and I could do my workout in Atlanta. So, you know... I went into my London money and I got on the plane and I went down to Atlanta to go see Tamar for her birthday and I forgot my fucking DVDs. So that means I stayed in Atlanta for four days and I did not have my insanity DVDs so I was not working out but I was still trying to eat good but you know I learned about my body. I really learned about my body. My body is like you got to work out and you got to maintain the workout if you want to maintain your weight. Because if you're not doing the workouts and you're eating, even if it's not bad, I'm, my weight is going to, it just go back up. Because I'm not exercising and even though I think I might be eating healthy or if I had some drinks or whatever, that shit blow me up. Like, it, it make my weight go up. So I did notice that my weight, <laughs> my weight went up. So my weight did go up. You know, I gained a good three pounds, you know. So I'm back to 224 pounds. But you know what? That's all right. Because I'm a... I'm going to work it out this week. I already did my fit test today, and I have another workout to do. Well, I'm not going to do that workout today, but I'm going to spread that shit out throughout the week. And you know what? After I finish my Insanity 8 week, or yeah, I think 8 weeks, I think it's 8, 9 weeks, 8, 9 weeks, I'm going to do it over again because I am just really, really happy with this program, and it's a really, really good program. So if you guys really want to do it, you know, you can do it, but you got to do the motherfucking work. You got to do the work. Don't think, oh, you could just do working out and you're going, the weight is just going to fall off of you. It's not, it's not going to just happen like that. You also have to fucking eat right and not drink. But today I'm having a cocktail, so don't judge me. You know, but yeah, you do have to eat right and everything. So it, it's tough. It's really, really tough. But um, shout out to everybody who bought Insanity. People been tweeting me Insanity pictures. Shout out to y'all for doing it and just don't give up. Even if you don't go, if you don't do it for the whole week, bitch, start over the next week and just keep doing. Keep pushing yourself. Keep pushing yourself. I didn't do Insanity none of last week. None of last week. And I still did better than I did on my first fit test. I still did better. I don't want to get up there and grab the numbers, but go to my Instagram. It's on Instagram. So the shit does work, but again, you got to do the work. You got to do the work if you want to see improvements in your body and your, you know, your physical appearance and everything. So that's all you got to do. So, you know, I ask you, I ask you guys on Twitter and Facebook, send me some questions that, you know, you want me to ask and every, answer and everything. So, I'm going to answer some questions. Some are personal, you know, I say, I, I could be a little vulnerable today. And um, some are, you know, you know, some people want to ask the music and gay stuff. People always ask the music and gay stuff all the time. I mean, girl, how did you come out and how do I come out to my family who's not accepting it? You know, and what you think about Beyonce? Do you think Beyonce is better than Adele? Do you think Beyonce is better than Janet? Do you think, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you? You know, give me some variety. Give me some variety. And more than the top and bottom question, okay? Everybody wants, are you the top? Are you the bottom? Why, why do you need to know that? Are we going to be fucking or something? Is there some plans in your future for us to fuck? Otherwise, you don't need to know that. Ain't nothing I need to broadcast on YouTube. Shit. But anyway, so the first question, I got a, I got a list of questions. I'm going to try to get through all of them. I'm not going to dwell on it for five minutes, a question, you know, but I'm going to go through some of these questions. So, because I ain't going to do the gossip video, you know, Mikel's not here, and we got to go over a bunch of stuff, and you know I'm going to talk about Beyonce, because I don't know what the fuck Beyonce is doing, where Beyonce is going with this album. I don't know if Beyonce even want to drop this album, and you know she's about to go on tour, and how she's going to have time to promote the album, and then go on tour together. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is Beyonce just going to go on tour and do her old songs? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe my co host may know. I don't know. I gotta talk to him to find out. So, but anyway, the first question is, and this is Beyonce related. Where's the Michelle Williams interview? Okay, well, you know, I'm going to give you guys the Michelle Williams interview most likely this weekend. Of course, Mikel, Mikel, Michelle, Michelle, and I, we talk for a good hour. But, of course, you know, sometimes, you know, you want to see how the interview turned out. And if, if there's some things that need to be edited out, 
they will be edited out. So that's what we're waiting on. Nothing bad, you know, but we, we will be having that video up for you guys this weekend. I'm going to say this weekend. And it was a really, really good, juicy interview. And I think y'all really, really going to love that one. I think you really, really will. So next question. How does a son or daughter, see, here we go. How does a son or daughter come out the closet when their family is so caught up in religion? Well, you know, I can't tell you the right or wrong way to come out to your family member. You have to come out when you feel it's right for you to come out. And most of the time, when you even think it's ready for you to come out, or before you're even ready to come out, they already know about you. So, you know, it don't even, sometimes it don't even matter. But then again, you do have those family members, and you do have those parents that be like, well, I'm not going to accept you. I'm just going to disown you. If your parents ever talk to you about disowning you, just wait till you are a grown person taking care of your motherfucking self. So that way, even if they do disown your ass, you got a job and a roof over your own head, and you can take care of yourself, and you don't have to depend on them for a motherfucking thing. But, on the other hand, if you live under their roof and you feel that they're going to kick you out and disown you everything, just keep it to your motherfucking self until you're ready to take care of yourself. Now, me on the other hand, I had my mom, you know, and I think my dad might have known. I heard that my dad knew. My dad accepted it, but I never had a chance to talk to him about it because my dad passed away, unfortunately. He passed away when I was 18. So, never had a chance to have that talk. But sometimes I do be like, damn, I wish me and my dad could talk. I had some beer, drink some beer, had a conversation, all of that. But my mom, you know, my mom, I came out at 16. My mom was like, oh, my God, no, this is not right, blah, 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 blah. And then one day we just cried together, and then that was history, you know. You got to accept your child. If, you know, if you can't accept your child, you know, for me, like, how do you expect somebody else to raise your child and accept your child and take care of your child and everything? You're just going to have to come to that realization that, you know, this is what you, this is, this is who your child is. First of all, I knew, oh my God, I knew since the third grade. But I'm just saying, though, you know, everybody's not going to be accepting. But if you know that your family will kick you out or disown you, just wait till you're able to take care of yourself. Otherwise, no. But my mom, we was just, you know, we just... At first she didn't, you know, and then we talked and she came around and you already see how me and my mom are now together. It wasn't all roses in the beginning. Like, no, nobody wants their child to be gay. Nobody. I don't even think if you're gay you would want your child to just be gay because there's so much that a gay person has to go through in life, you know. You got to be accepted. I mean, you got to worry about people going to accept you. You got to worry about if people talking about you at work. It is just... So much going on, okay? Black and gay, okay? You got all these damn... You know what? Let's go to the next question. How long are you willing to make shows on the YouTube format? I'm willing to make shows on YouTube format as long as I can just keep being creative. I don't mind being on the YouTube scene because, you know what? A 9 to 5 is not for me. You know, I've done a 9 to 5s and, and I don't want to do that no more. I want to be able to talk for a good hour and make my coins and sit my ass down. You know, I wish I could do, well, I do something, do something like that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, well, I don't, I don't know the right, what, what other way to say it. Like, I don't want to work a nine to five. Shit, that's something I don't want to do. And, you know, even if we don't ever make it to TV, as long as the YouTube thing, from if, if McKenna don't want to do it no more, which would be fine, you know. As long as I can revamp and be creative and make it better, then that's fine with me because I don't want to do this video in the house forever. No, 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 no. I want to be able to go to a studio. I want to be able to have an audience. I want to have people watch our show because, you know what? Just because you're not on TV does not mean you can't have an online impact on people. People can watch the show. Shit, you got people on YouTube that get millions. I don't thought I was the rock for a second. And millions of hits, okay? They get millions and millions of hits, but they don't have a show, and I don't think that a lot of them can captivate an audience for a whole hour like we can. But if we could get that millions of people to watch us for a good hour, oh my God, and do it five nights a week, what the fuck you need a television show for? People will be knocking at your door. There's people knocking to come on our YouTube show, but people will be knocking like, bitch, I got to come on y'all online show. So you know what, don't ever knock anybody that does anything online or have a web series or a web format show. This is where the dollars is at, YouTube. 
Fuck waiting on big head execs to say, oh, well, we think y'all would be good for this audience and blah, 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 blah. When you could just do the shit by yourself. And that's what we do. Now, when we get on TV, of course, we might have to be censored in some areas, but shit, YouTube ain't nobody. YouTube has it. Oh, you can't curse. You can't do this. You can, we got more freedom to do that than on television and, and worrying about fines and all that stuff. So, next question. Who are your favorite singers that are underrated and need more shine? Oh, if you go through my iTunes list, I mean, it's a lot of people on, on my iTunes that don't get some shine. Like Melanie Fiona, like do you know, do y'all even know that she won two Grammys singing with CeeLo Green, but she's still underrated and you know people didn't really buy her album, The MF Life, which is so damn good, okay? Then we got people like Vivian Green, who is a Philadelphia artist, Jill Scott is uh underrated, but you know most people find out more about her through the acting, you know, but still people don't really get her albums. Um Miguel, who's another underrated R and B artist, but he could be so good. If people just catch on to him, and even if he ventured into pop, not saying change the pop sound, but if the pop station played his songs, Miguel would just be so great. I don't know if I said Kelly Rowland, but Kelly Rowland is another underrated artist, and most of these are R&B. But you know what? Most, cause you know most of the most of the pop people they are right, cause they got the pop channels where they got more people listening, you know. But the R&B really don't have people that wanna run out and buy their motherfucking albums. You know, of course, Marsha Ambrosius. You know, it's a lot of people. I can go on and on and on. But let me tell you something. I like the underdog. I love the underdog. Because underdogs, most of the time, they win. And then everybody, you already know about the underdog. But then it's fun to see everybody else catch on. Like, oh, my God. Like, you know, I really do like this person. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. You know how people do. But, yeah. So those are some of my um, favorite underrated artists that need more shine. Um, why didn't I go to college? When Let me tell you. When I didn't go to college... I was I was making a good job. I was at a good job. I was making good money. I was making close to thirty five thousand dollars a year, and I stayed there almost four years. And I'm like, wow, I'm making all of this money at nineteen. I was there at nineteen, and I didn't even have to go to college. I'm like, I'm working all day. There will be no time for me to go to college. And then when I got fired, I really got caught up into this YouTube thing. I was really ready to go to college and everything. And now it's like I'm so caught up in this YouTube thing. It's like where the fuck I'm gonna go to school? You know? Am I ever, am I able gonna am I able, am I gonna be able to go to classes here and and everything? And I know that there's online classes, but I think that some stuff is better in classes. I don't know. So right now I'm at that point where it's like, hmm, what's going on with your future? So let me tell y'all. So I'm doing. There's three things I wanted to be growing up. I wanted to be a doctor, I wanted to be a teacher, and I wanted to do, like, be a news reporter. I'm already a news reporter. I have this on YouTube, so I talk about the news, talk about what's going on. And you know I'm doing it in a much better way because on the news, a lot of people have to be censored, and they can't really say how they feel about what's going on. So I'm already doing that, and I'm doing what I love. And what's the next thing? Going out there, doing interviews, going out there, just interviewing people from all walks of life and not just a music star. And, you know, so, you know, some people look down on the porn star, but shit, that video got 30,000 views. So, y'all were interested in something, you know. So, you know, I just want to, this, this is just what I want to do. I, of course, I would love to have a talk show. Oh, my God. Do you know how much I wanted to be like Ricky Lake? Of course, I told y'all I'm going to be like Oprah. But I wanted to be like Ricky Lake. Ricky Lake was young and fun and her shows and everything. Oh, my God. It was just amazing so for me I'm working on like what I'm working on with that and that is like I'm working on watching how other people interview and then you know I'm trying to incorporate that into me and how it can keep me still being me and without me being nervous because sometimes when I venture into new stuff it's a nerve-wracking thing like I'm trying to start hosting parties and everything so I'm a little bit nervous about the party that I'm hosting in Philly but look it's going to be a great show it's going to be great because I'm going to be me and that's the best thing you can do is be me I mean, be me. Be, you can't be me, but I'm saying that's the best thing for me to, is to be me. So, there we go. So, so when I go to college, I'm pretty sure I will. And it's, most likely it will be an online school. And it has to be an online school that I really, really like. Where I can get my degree. And if it's going to be a degree, it may be in journalism and it may, or it may be in teaching. Because I really think that our children need more teachers and we need more black male teachers in schools. And a lot of the black, these black males today, they want to stay out on the motherfucking corner all day thinking that that's cool. No, bitch, get a job. But anyway, I could, you know, I could go on and on and on about that subject because I see it in my neighborhood all the time. 
How do you think social media affects the music industry? Social media affects it in a real big way. A real big way. You got Twitter, you got Tumblr, you got Pinterest, you got YouTube, you got Instagram, you got Facebook. These celebrities need to get on that shit and then they get out there and interact with their fans because, you know, it, it brings fans more to a place where they feel like they can interact with you and get to know you and, and like you for who you are more because back in the day, all they had is magazines and whatever, Access Hollywood or Inside Edition or with some other shows. Entertainment Tonight talked about you. But now, you know, I know it's a lot of stuff like, oh, I don't want everybody in my private life. You don't got to tell everybody your private life. You can still have a private life and have a professional life at the same damn time. If your fans love your music, get out there and fucking tweet with them. Yes, thank you so much for buying my album. Or this is, I was feeling this when I recorded this song. This is what I was going through. Blase, blase, blase. You know, get the fuck out there and interact with your fans. Shit. Like their pictures on Instagram. Leave a nice little comment on their Instagram. You know, let them write you on Facebook or, you know, do something where you like, okay, send somebody a private fucking message. Janet Jackson sent me a private message on motherfucking MySpace. Do you know how crazy, how, how happy I was? Like, damn, like, she done wrote me on MySpace. MySpace. You know, people feel connected. People feel connected through the music. Sometimes people want to know more than they should know. But that's, you know, you ain't got to put all your shit out there. But the paparazzi, they got to make their money. And the paparazzi are some crazy motherfuckers. They are. They are crazy. But they do it all for a motherfucking dollar. But I just hope that they don't kill anybody else. I don't, they don't need to be chasing anybody. You know, it's not that serious for a motherfucking picture. It's not. So yeah, social media, oh, it definitely affects the music industry. And another thing that affects the music industry that need to come the fuck back is MTV TRL. MTV need to start playing more videos during the daytime and bring back TRL. Bring it the fuck back. A lot of, there's a lot of struggling artists that can use that exposure from MTV that don't watch BET. Believe me when I tell you, they really, really could. Uh, mm, have you had a crush? On a close friend, and if so, how they react? No, I never had a crush on a close friend, but I did want somebody that was kind of like my close friend. But you know, and then I realized I'm like, nah, I don't need that in my life. Oh, you know, sometimes you know, once you get older, you see some certain stuff, you be like, nah, no, I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that's that's definitely not what I want. But when you're younger, you know, you're like, this is what I like, you know. But no, nope. So I never had a crush on a close, close friend, but at one point I did want someone that was kind of like them. You know, not like Adele, someone like you. No, not like that. But yeah, you know, sometimes people have that. But you know, if you do, because I think somebody did write me about having a crush on a friend that's, that's two males, you know. If you do have that, you know, feeling, tell them how you feel. That's the best thing you can do. Tell them how they feel. And you can say, hey, I want to know your response. Or I don't want to know your response, you know? It's up to you. But as long as you get that off your chest, things will be much, much better. And, you know, so I say go ahead and do that. Um, what made you want to learn Spanish? Wow, what made me want to learn Spanish? Oh, MJ, I was a Selena Stan back in the day. Before Stan was a word, bitch, I think I watched Selena at least 500 times. I really, I watched that movie every fucking day. Day, I mean, I when I say I watch that movie every day, I watch that movie every day. I was thinking of ways to bring Selena back to motherfucking life. That's how much of a stand I was back in the day. Ooh, the late 90s. I seen that video. I mean, that movie, I was like, oh my God, you know? And then, you know, J-Lo was a big, a big, um... Latin pop star, and then you had Ricky Martin, and then you had Mark Anthony. You know, it was just this big Latin explosion back in the late 90s. Everybody, so they had their songs in Spanish, and they had their songs in English. And you know, I really was in Spanish class, I was really paying, I got A's in Spanish. I never felt in Spanish class. I never even had a B, a C, a D, or an F in Spanish. Everything was a motherfucking A. Bitch, and I don't even get an A, I mean, I don't even get a B, a C, a D, and an E, and an F. And motherfucker was at a stone, I be passing that shit. Like, like A's, 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 A's. Like, I love my Rosetta Stone. I'm standing right now talking to my Spanish. But yes, like, I, and who wouldn't want to be bilingual? 
If you could be bilingual, I say go ahead and be bilingual, bitch. Speak two languages and make that motherfucking money. If you do speak two languages, go out there and make that money. And the voice is on, you know. I'm going to just have to watch the DVR later. But yeah, so make that motherfucking money if you bilingual. And yes, one day I want to talk to somebody and have a great conversation with them in Spanish. But I've been learning so much on Rosetta Stone. If anybody out there that that was, you know, had their reservations about Rosetta Stone, I'm here to tell you, it's a great learning program. And everything, whatever language you're learning, the whole program is in that language. You don't speak to anybody or you don't speak anything in English at all. It's all in the language that you're learning. They help you how to write it. They help you how to speak it. They help you pronounce it. They help you with the vocabulary. It's just everything. What I love, I'm, I'm, I'm standing. Look. So, of course, and then they make you read the shit. They make you read it in Spanish and make sure that you're understanding what you're reading. And, and, and like, it's silent and you just clicking on shit. You know, I could sit here and try to speak to y'all in Spanish, but I don't want to do that. You know, but I'll, you know, maybe one of these days. But I'm really, really loving Rosetta Stone. So, I want to be able to just start speaking them when I'm really confident. And sometimes when I had a cocktail, you know, that Spanish want to jump out me. But no, it's not the time. So, why don't you let anybody help you? Oh my God, I think it's just this big Scorpio thing where Scorpios like to be independent on some stuff and they don't want to hear other people's opinions on everything. But let me don't let me not categorize all Scorpios in the same box. But bitch, I'm a hard-headed person. And when I see something, if you don't see what I see, then we're going to have a big problem. And it's, we're going to have to fight for you to see it my way because I'm not going to see it your way. Not unless you got a really good explanation on why my black ass should see it your way. And, you know, of course, like, oh, my God, I had the ScorpioShow.com. It went dormant again. And people been writing like, oh my God, I just want to volunteer for your site. But it's like, oh my God, I need to have a great vision for what I want my site to be and what I want to be on it. And, you know, nobody is giving me that that fire like, bitch, I can help you with this, this, and that. And we can do this, this, and that. Like, okay, for instance, like I've been doing research on the Scorpion Show. Of course, everybody's American. We got maybe, uh, like, like, it was saying like a thousand people from America commented. But only a hundred people commented from the UK. Now, this is how I'm thinking, bitch, what I got to do to get 200 people to comment from the UK? And if I got to go out there, if we got to see him talk about more stories from the UK, that's what we're going to do. So, you know, you know, I say to myself, well, bitch, this is what you need to do. And if you're not saying that's what's going to help me or we're not on the same page with what you're telling me, it's not going to work. Ooh, damn, don't look like this black Mikel. <laughs> Mikel is no shade, you know, if, if, if it's, it's, it's just not going to work. You just got to see it the way I see it. It's just it's a pride thing. Oh, my God. It really is. It really, really is. Um, what, what, what opinions have changed um, um, that you've said on the Scorpion Show? And from a 1 to 10, how approachable are you at a bar? Oh, my God. I've said a lot of stuff. I can't think of it right away. But, um... One time, oh my God, one time I said something about Beyonce. Beyonce didn't call Jennifer Hudson. She's a bitch. She's a bitch, bitch, bitch. Now that's something that I regret. It's not regret, no, bitch. I don't regret saying, but I think I learned from saying stuff like that. I've refrained from being evil on YouTube. Just because I might not like something somebody says or does or do, I can't be malicious to that person when they haven't done anything to me. If they ain't do anything to me, why is it hurting you so bad? Why does it hurt me so bad? It don't hurt me. So I shouldn't be out there willing to say, oh, this ugly bitch, oh, this fat bitch, this, you know, saying shit that's me and you know you don't have no business saying. So what I say is, if that was me, I would do so and so and so and so. And that's where, you know, the Scorpio Show opinions come from. But in the beginning, I think we were some, ooh, we were some mean bitches back in the day. But, you know, we, we changed a lot. We changed a lot. And from 1 to 10, how approachable I'm in the bar, I would say a 10. If I'm not approachable at all to you, that's a problem. That is a problem with me. Because I feel anybody can talk to me at any time. If you see me on my headphones and I'm on the train. Bitch, if you see me, knock, knock, on, knock on me. Say, hey, I watch you on YouTube. You know? And I'm going to say, hey, thank you for watching. Like, 
Or if you like, or you walk past me, like, oh my God, that's yeah, that's me. Hey, how you doing? I might give you a hug. We can take a picture or whatever. I will feel offended if you feel you can't approach me. So it's a ten bitch on me being approachable anywhere. You can approach me anywhere. Um, if you if you could change anything about your life, what would it be and why? Well, let me tell you something right now. I wouldn't change nothing about my life at all because everything that we go through are life experiences. And the shit that you go through in your life, you never know how you'll help somebody. You know, so I, you know, I tell people all the time, don't, oh my goodness, my mom, come on, can we get it together? Get it together. Get it together. You know, you know, I tell people all the time, don't be out here feeling sad all the motherfucking time. Why are you so sad? And why? Oh, they better fucking perform, bitch. Hold up. <laughs> bitch, you better play that fucking harmonica. Shakira. Anyway, oh, I can't wait to get into the show. But anyway, yeah. So, um. <clears throat> so, yeah. Don't be sitting around feeling sad about shit. Moping around. And you know what I think it is? Because I'm, I'm going to put it out there. My friend Dennis. Me and Dennis had a nice conversation. And I think the reason why, I, I don't want to say I'm tough on Dennis, but the reason why I think Dennis thinks I'm so tough is because, for me, I think it's because I'm a little bit older. But he thinks I'm being tough on him. And most of the time, the shit that he complained about, I've been there and I'd be like, bitch, it ain't, it ain't that much of a problem. Like, you, you, you shouldn't even feel sad about it. And the shit that bothers you, it shouldn't even bother you because it's not even that serious. You know, some uh, most of the time, it really don't be that serious. So you sitting around, moping around, being sad, and like, oh, I don't want to talk to nobody. I'm having a bad day. Blah, 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 blah. That other person is just so happy and living their life. And, bitch, you just laying there all sad. Fuck that. Get the fuck up and have a good day and enjoy your day. And don't let that stop you from living life. You know, people, I go through shit all the time. I go, but they ain't gonna stop me. Oh, I'm, I don't want to go on YouTube and make a video and fuck that, fuck that. I'm, I'm almost thirty, you know. So a lot of that don't affect me, you know. Or I could be at, I could be in the same place with somebody at the same time and not like them and still say hello and just keep it about my business and don't say nothing else to that person, you know. You don't have to be that way. And I mean, you don't have to be that way, but sometimes it be that way. It, it, it be that way. Um, and then what would I change? You know, I also recently thought about how my life would be if if I grew up and my sister didn't have six kids. How different would my life would be? Sometimes I do think about that, but I don't want to change that. Because, you know, I've learned so much just dealing with children, dealing with people, growing up with pe kids. What if I had a chance to grow up with other kids in my house? Shit, my mom had me. 10 years after she had my sister. So, you know, she had them that that set. Then I just came out the blue. I'm here. Hey, shit. You know, so what it would be like if I didn't have a younger niece or a nephew and, or, you know, a brother. Well, they're not my brothers and sisters, but technically you can say that because that's how we grew up. But it's like, what if I didn't have that? How would I treat people? How would I interact with people? What would I be doing right now? Shit. I probably wouldn't be on YouTube. You know, it's just so funny how how life will be, you know, so, you know, when you go through these experiences, don't say, oh my God, I wish I could take it back. Don't take nothing back because everything is a, is a learning curve, it's a learning experience. So if you ever feel sad about anything, try to find the strength in not being so sad about anything and just say, you know what, that's life. It happens and you got to keep, take, take it and keep fucking moving on, you know, that's, that's just what it's about. So, uh, what else did I get? Did I get any other questions? I think I answered, yeah, I asked every, answered everything. So, yeah, so I didn't want to give you guys a gossip video, but I did want to give you guys a questions video, a questionnaire video, because, you know, we've been going for a minute, you know? So, we got to come back, and we're going to come back with a vengeance this week, bitch. Because the shit that's going through my mind, oh, we're going to do some of that shit. So, anyway, <laughs> so, anyway, thank you guys for watching. I got to watch The Voice. Y'all have a good night. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.